Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hina Ijaz. Welcome to Pakistan. As you know, I welcome guests on the show who are either foreigners or expats, either living in Pakistan or visiting Pakistan. It's always an exciting opportunity for me on a personal level as well to get to know them, the story, uh, the stories, uh, what brings them to Pakistan, what uh, made them stay in Pakistan, if they are staying or stationed in Pakistan, working here. And why do they find Pakistan so exciting? Of course, it's a very exciting country with very exciting features. Whether you go to the south or you're in the central or you go up north. There's so much to do here as we all know. And on the other hand, as you know, I always have a Pakistani guest who has an inclination towards tourism, the tourism industry. Whether the person likes to uh, 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 see new adventures or um, find more exciting places in Pakistan and tell their stories. Similarly, I have a Pakistani guest as well today on my show today. I'm going to start with the foreign side and then move to the Pakistani side. My guest today is Noor Banu. You must be wondering, is she from Pakistan? No, she's not from Pakistan. She's from Turkey. And as we all know, Turkey is a very glamorous uh, nation. Uh, it's an in industrialized country as well as a developing country, has a great economy, has a great uh, level of tourism there. But we find this young Turkish uh, lady here in Pakistan, working in Pakistan. Now, what brought her to Pakistan? This is her third visit. It's been six months that she's been living here. So let's find out. Hi, Assalamu alaikum, Nurbana. Hi, alaikum salam. Thank, Thank you so you much. For us. Thank you so much for inviting. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing great, actually. Thank you so much. And on the other side, I have Usman Ghani Sahib, he's founder for Positive Pakistan. What is Positive Pakistan? Of course, the name might tell us a little bit but but we need to know more and find out what exactly does positive pakistan do assalamu alaikum usman sir Islam. how are you i'm fine thank you so thank much thank you so much for joining us today but before i come to your story i have to go back to noor and find out what's her story so you came here the first time in 2018 That's for a right. short period That's right. then you came in 2020 right. then you came in 20 <laughs> Uh, 21, yes. six months ago. That's You've been right. here, you teach at a university here, That's you're right. a Turkish English teacher That's there. Right. I, I, I think your life must be very exciting uh, given, you know, once you're working at a college or a university, you interact with a lot of youth. That's right. That's so tell right. me about it, please. Uh, so let me start from the beginning then. Uh, actually, sure. my grandmother was born in Pakistan. She was born in Bannu, Kaifer Pakhtunkhwa. She's Turkish, yes, she's Turkish, but basically, like she was born in 1947 and uh, she was Turkish. Like my whole community was living in uh, East Turkestan, uh, but due to some war which was going on there, they had to move to British India first. And after the partition, they had to move to Pakistan. And at that time, my grandma was born. And then in 1950s, they... Pakistan. That's right. Which part of Pakistan? Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. I don't know whether I pronounced yes, it in a correct way. Yes, you have way. pronounced it just right. <laughs> yeah, KPK, Let let's that. say. So she was born there and then they all migrated to Turkey in 1950s because they are Turkish. So, you know, she always wanted to come back to Pakistan, but she couldn't. And she passed away in 2013. So I'm Very here. Sorry to hear Thank that. you so much. So I'm here to chase her dreams. That's why I'm here. Uh, I like being here, actually. I'm enjoying my every moment. <laughs> and Did she fall in love with Pakistan? She, she used to tell me lots of stories about Pakistan. That's why I'm here, actually. It's and how, what, what's your worldview? About Pakistan. Yes. Uh, so Pakistan is totally different from what we see from me on media here like living in Pakistan Experiencing Pakistan is totally something different which we see from media So that's why I'm so lucky to be here to experience all those things to be teaching here to be traveling here These are all exciting. <laughs> I want to know all about your adventures in Pakistan travel related and how is it working in Pakistan and interacting with the youth of Pakistan. But before that, I'd like our viewers to take a look at Turkey. Of course, many Pakistanis go to Turkey everywhere. And in fact, it's a major global tourist attraction for world travelers. Let's take a look at it. And when we return, we continue our discussion with Noor Pano.
all, your country is gorgeous, no doubt. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and Pakistan has its own beauty. It's like a hidden jewel, as I always say in my show. There's so much to discover. But what all have you discovered, Nurbano, in Pakistan so far? So I've been to many cities here actually. Uh, I've been to Karachi, Islamabad, Lahore, as you know, Hunza Skardu. Hunza was amazing. Oh, it you've was been so to Hunza. beautiful. And I've been to Burewala, some villages which have no name. How uh, did you end up in a village? Uh, because my friends, family, like they invited me. How lovely is that? Yeah, Pakistan. How was the village like, experience? Though? It was so good. Um, actually, that that was a village which had no electricity, so they were living in the dark. But their heart, like it was, they they had a big heart. They they gave me everything. They gave me money. They gave me vegetables, fruits. They gave How me whatever nice. they had. You know. How nice. It was so lovely. So did you get a chance to visit the place where your grandmother was born and lived in Pakistan? Yes. Unfortunately. Good. There's, you know, there's some things uh, should be left undone because when the time's right, then you can go and visit that place. I'm I'm keeping it. Inshallah, I will. I'm planning. I know everything has a time and it has a time as well. I will. I, I believe that. <laughs> now, uh, Turkey uh, being a Muslim country mm. mainly and so is Pakistan. Now, what are the similarities that, you, that you've observed between the two countries culturally? Culturally? Uh, maybe the hospitality, you know, uh, that's so similar. We welcome people and Pakistanis welcome everyone. They are so welcoming, they are so accepting. Um, I think that is the, you know, the, the common thing between Pakistanis and Turkey. But apart from that, we have some historical, you know, uh, stories together. Uh, but obviously, there are so many differences as well. But, you know, as you said in the beginning, like, that's why every country has its own beauty. Absolutely. Now you see, Turkey has a very diverse culture. Of course, uh, uh, once uh, the Ottoman uh, influence started diluting in Turkey, the Western cult culture did prevail. And especially during the youth of that time, mm -hmm. it, uh, it you know spread its roots mm -hmm. and it can be seen till date, mm -hmm. the Western influence. However, in many parts of Turkey, you can see the original Turkish culture which would comprise of Ottoman influence and even Anatolian and uh, some Turkic as they say. That's right, that's right. So you see these influences in many parts of Turkey even today. That's right. So again, uh, in Pakistan, you see these different regional cultures around. So again, if I come to the regional cultures of Turkey, is yes. there a similarity between Pakistan and Turkey? Ah, oh, well... Um, in terms of the family structure family and many structure. things like that. We can say about family structure, uh, you know, uh, you live as a joint fam family j mostly, but in our villages, in our regional places, yes. people still live as that way, you know. They live as a together, like with their in-laws and everyone. But apart from that, uh, I don't think that there are so many similarities. That's why maybe Pakistan is so exciting for me because it is so different. Whenever I wake up, like I see a different thing. Whenever I go somewhere, I explore something new actually. Was there an interesting story that your grandmother must have shared about you about Pakistan and you still remember it? Uh, actually, like uh, she used to tell me how she used to play with kids around the near a river or somewhere. She used to tell me all those stories. However, she was very young actually. She was like five years old when she moved to Turkey. But we have this uh, person in Turkey. She is a real Pakistani and she's a close friend of my grandmother. Uh, so now like she's still alive. Uh, she shares so many stories. Unfortunately, she didn't come back to Pakistan again after she moved to Turkey. That's a little unfortunate. Uh, but, exactly. But so, you're fulfilling her dream. Exactly. Also, the community, whole community actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Cappadocia, you know, the heart of hot air balloons, you know, yeah. from where they rise. It's uh, built with soft volcanic r uh, ruptures and soft rocks. <laughs> that's now right. that's a gorgeous place and it's a big tourist destination mm -hmm. for tourists going to Turkey and if they don't um, get, avail that ride, I think it's such a waste. Why? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. 
So have you ever been there yourself? Uh, I have never been to Cappadocia, unfortunately. <laughs> but you I've been to other No, other I'm places. recommending you as a, to you, you as there? a Pakistani, yes, <laughs> that you must go there. So um, tell us about some more exciting places in Turkey. Because you see, these are major tourist attractions. Uh, yes. I'm sure there's some hidden treasures. Yeah, I'm from Istanbul. But as you know, Istanbul is yes. the most popular city in Turkey. But we have this Pamukkale. Ephesus, Izmir, Antalya, of Fethiye, course. if you want to go for scuba diving, you know, for everyone you can find There's something, something in Turkey. There's something for everybody. It's something for everybody. If you want to visit some historical places, you can. Oh, if you would like to visit, <laughs> exactly, if you would like to visit like some summer places, if you want to swim or something, you can find so many places there. Right. So, as you know, there is always something for everyone in absolutely, Turkey. Absolutely, absolutely. And then on that note, I'm going to a short break. And when I return, the story continues and we shall also speak to Usman Ghani about how positive Pakistan is playing a positive role in promoting tourism in Pakistan. But right after this short break. Right, so we have Noor Banu with us today. The funny thing is, I'll share a story with you. Today when I was informed then that I have a foreigner guest named Noor Banu, I got all confused. I was like, is Noor Banu from some foreign country or is she from some other province of Pakistan? Because Noor Banu, uh, of course, Noor, as you see, I've had Turkish guests here on the show before. And I do have some Turkish friends, but then the names are so difficult to pronounce. That's right. <laughs> it's, it's a struggle for me, a struggle and a half. But Noor Banu is short and sweet and simple. Thank you so much. And it's a lovely name and you're wearing this lovely Pakistani attire, Thank I see you as so well. Much. <laughs> so how comfortable are you with the shalwar kameez? It is very comfortable, actually. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I can wear it you every day. You wear it day. often? Uh, uh, yeah, at office I try to wear you try it often, to. yes. <laughs> Coming back to your employment at a yeah. university here, yeah. you have a contract here for a year I believe? Yeah, that's right. So you get to interact of course with a lot of uh, young people. Now the youth of Pakistan, Now they're the ones representing Pakistan, they're the future of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. How, how do you find them? What, what do you think about their energy levels? Uh, I believe they are very clever. You know, Pakistani clever, students are very clever. Way. No, 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 in a, in a good way. Like, they're intelligent. <laughs> Just kidding. They're, they're intelligent, seriously. Right. And it's very surprising for me that they can speak more than a language. They speak, you know, Urdu, obviously, it, because it's their mother language, and then English. And then they can speak Punjabi, Sindhi, the other languages. Do you understand any of that? Uh, I just a know a couple of words in Punjab, Punjabi. Can you tell me about a few? A menu, tenu, kurier. India, four words. And you know the meaning? Yeah. <laughs> and what do they mean? Menu is like me. Absolutely. And Tenu is like you. Yes. And Korea is like girl, I think. Yes. Because in the village they were like, oh, Korea, you know, they were like <laughs> calling me. And Mundi, I think it's it's man, it's boy. boy. Yes. Yeah. The I just, I'm trying. <laughs> right. Well, the only thing I understand in Turkish is tamam. Tamam. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's it. That's enough. So I, I just try so hard, you know, the times when you go to some new country. And uh, especially the language Arabic, it's spoken in so many Muslim countries, not just Saudi Arabia, obviously. And you try and you know fig try and figure out some words, you know that yeah. this might mean that, yeah. or that one might mean this. That's right. But in Turkish, it's it's a struggle in a half. It is right. You're right. But on the other hand, there are so many common words between Turkish and Urdu. Yes. Because. But still, you know, when the Turkish uh, speak in a flow. That's language. right, that's right. It's a little <laughs> difficult to catch up, that's it's a race. <laughs> I, I feel like the, tur it, the turtle and the rabbit and the turtle race, you know. <laughs> I'm left so far behind. Mm -hmm. so and we speak very fast, right? Maybe yeah, if you have yes, heard. Yes, yes, naturally. <laughs> so, um, the Turkish carpets, you know, have become very popular in Pakistan as well now. Very po popular. And uh, they're known for, you know, you see carpet weaving, you know, dates back to like ages ago and let's put it that way that uh, since let's uh, since you know the, all these empires were establishing in Turkey a lot of uh, it's known as an art form in Turkey since those days mm -hmm. so how fond are you of this art in Turkey uh, to be honest we have carpets everywhere in my house it's a common thing for people to have carpets in their houses uh, it's something cultural and we take off yes. our shoes before we enter because we have carpets 
<laughs> right, and that's the way it should be if you have carpets inside. Mm -hmm. So you're very fond of this. Yeah, form of exactly, art. exactly. It, as you said, it's an art. We have different kind of symbols, motifs on carpets, which tells a story actually, especially in the region, region areas like um, villages, you know, small places. Yes. They carve everything. Yes. Yeah. So a fun fact about Pakistan is that we also have a lot of Turkish restaurants. Are you aware of that? I know, but some of them were closed due to the coronavirus. Yes, but now they've reopened. <laughs> That's good then. <laughs> so you, I have, what do you think about their food quality in terms of if you come to match it with your Turkish restaurants in Turkey. Well, I have never tried Turkish food in Pakistan. You haven't? You I must. Haven't. The restaurants are good. <laughs> oh, and I, and I, I have nothing to gain by, you know, promoting that by them <laughs> and saying anything about anything good about them. But yes, the food is good. That's and good at times that. these restaurants are also getting Turkish chefs to come in from Turkey in Pakistan. That's great. And even train the, uh, the local staff here. So you must try it. Uh, Try them, I, I will, I will. Thank you for your recommendation, <laughs> I will. <laughs> so, um, what about Turkish food? You see, um, there are a lot of herbs infused in it, I believe. And Pakistani food, contrary to that, has a lot of spices. So, which, I mean, are you okay with the spicy food here? Well, uh, when I came here for the first time, everything was so spicy for me. Uh, but now I'm used to it. You're used to I'm it. I'm used to it. And what's your favorite uh, meal here? I mean, any time of the day. Um, what do you I like prefer? biryani. I like Why biryani is it that so every much? foreigner who comes <laughs> on my show likes biryani? But I like one more thing. But whenever I say this, people find it very awkward. Okay, please give me a new dish or something. I like Andewala burger. Very good. It Thank is very you. delicious. You've it broken is the monotony. <laughs> I'm sick of hearing biryani. Do I love biryani? You see, I am from Karachi and I love biryani and I know what real biryani tastes like. Some people when they make white biryani, that's a big no-no. Biryani has to be a particular yellow color and potato is a very important component in that. And I'm very for, you know, speaking out for the, uh, speaking for the, speaking for the right kind of biryani. Mm -hmm. Do not make biryani wrong, otherwise it's palau. You know palau? I know. We have palau in Turkish. So you see, I get very emotional now about biryani. <laughs> When they tell you they're sending you biryani and it's not biryani. Well, a biryani in Karachi is so delicious. It's the real biryani. It hails <laughs> from Karachi. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we have some amazing dishes all over the country. Karachi has its own flavor. Lahore has its own flavor. Uh, the northern areas have a, s a different uh, uh, combination mm -hmm. of foods, you know, and it's mostly meaty. Mm -hmm. and, um, Less spice. Yes, absolutely. But um, you've been to Karachi. Have you seen the difference between Karachi and Lahore food? Have you observed it? Ah, uh, yes, actually. Uh, and there is this thing between Lahoris and Karachis. Whenever I'm in Lahore, the people There's ask, also a cultural difference. Uh, yeah. Right? I'd like to hear that. Yes, I'm all ears. People always ask me, Nurbana, tell me where, which food is better, like in Karachi or in Lahore? And when I go to Karachi and meet my friends, they also ask the same question. Well, I have no question, no answer for this question actually. Like, I, I just like the desi okay, food, I like desi uh, cuisine. Uh, now you don't, let's put it this way, you're not talking to Karachi friends here, you're not talking to Lahore friends. Speak your heart out, which food's better? Oh, uh, both Come of on. them, both of them. <laughs> ah, don't be so diplomatic, come on. Okay, should I be honest with it? Of I mean, course. I tried very delicious things in Lahore. But I think in Karachi it's better. Yes, Karachi wins. Karachi yeah, has I'm really better sorry food. to say but this. Uh, no doubt, Kara Lahore has its own flavor, its own uniqueness. It's very exclusive uh, when it especially comes to the food in the inner uh, in interior city. Especially the food street has a different. Uh, it offers different flavors altogether. And uh, have you been to the food street? Huh? Of course. And have you been to the old city? Of course, I've been in Lahore, right? Yes, yes, yes. Haveli and the other fort places. and everything. Yes, everywhere. How was the experience? Bad Shahi Mosque is so beautiful. It is really beautiful. Before I came to Lahore, I saw the picture of Lahore, uh, Bad Shahi Mosque, and I was like, I'm going I got, there. I gotta go there. I gotta go there. I'm going there. And when I went there, it was amazing. And I like Wazir Khan Mosque as well. That's it gorgeous. is so beautiful. So it's I, I have, beautiful. Exactly. I like old places, old chai places, especially in old soul, Lahore. Sorry? You have an old soul. Exactly. <laughs> All right. 
So, uh, Nurbano, I have also observed that a lot of Turkish people do not speak in English. That's right. That's, that, no, that's a complication. It becomes difficult. Well, it's nice to know just your own language, but for, you know, others, the foreigners, <laughs> to the Turkish, mm -hmm. uh, it's difficult to converse. And why is that so? Um, because I think Turkey, I don't know whether it's a right to put it that way but turkey was not colonized i yes. think it was not a colonized yes. country so we didn't have that feeling to speak another language the i need. think the need we didn't feel it i guess mm. and um and you know like whenever you mix turkish with english words in turkey they criticize you a lot mm. they ask you to speak pure turkish mm. even right now in 21st century it's like that in turkey i think that's one of the reasons um, yeah, it's because of the history and all, I guess. But you're right. You're right. So, but it becomes a little <laughs> difficult, but no problem. We'll try and uh, catch up with some more words other than tamam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Osman Ghani Saab, you've got to hear your story now. Positive Pakistan. I believe um, you interact with a lot of foreigners on the social media platform as well as on some travel apps. And uh, you have encouraged a lot of foreigners to come and visit Pakistan. You try and show them the positive side of Pakistan. Osman Ghani's story starts with uh, the year or starts in the year 2012 when he first went abroad and uh, noticed, rather observed, that the image of Pakistan was highly distorted, the right uh, message was not, uh, the right message wasn't out there. So he took this initiative, initiative upon himself on a personal level. He started a forum called Positive Pakistan. He promotes Pakistan positively as should every Pakistani uh, promote Pakistan in a positive way because yes, there's so much positivity around here and all we need to do is just send the message across to the world because this is what, what, the, what the world needs to hear and see because that's the real Pakistan. The real Pakistan is positive Pakistan. Osman Ghani Saab, so what is the forum exactly? Let's come into the micro, uh, sp uh, micro um, objectives of uh, the forum. So as you have already introduced my mission Positive Pakistan, uh, basically I started traveling in 2012 and I traveled to different parts of the world like Southeast Asia, Europe, Central Asia, Middle East, and uh, I'd mentioned Turkey, of course, like Turkey and maybe UAE, where a lot of Pakistani expats are living. So, you know, I thought that it is very easy to sit at home and complain that, you know, media is not doing enough, government is not doing enough. So I took this initiative on my own. I thought like, okay, I don't have a reach to thousands of people, but still whatever is in my own capacity, I have to start something. So from there came this idea of Mission Positive Pakistan and I try to facilitate the foreign travelers in every way possibly I can. Right, and I must add here that the government of Pakistan currently is, uh, uh, is initiating, uh, or in fact has initiated a lot of uh, tourist-based activities and is encouraging private investors to come in and develop more tourism uh, adventures, sports, hotels, resorts and so much all across Pakistan, especially in the up northern areas. But yes, uh, there are a few buildings that may need revision architecturally because they may not blend in with the environment of that particular area or region. However, whenever development is taking place, and is especially uh, uh, being uh, undertaken by a private investor, one must encourage them because in order to promote tourism, we will require such facilities in these areas. There are already there, but so many local investors especially, in fact, international investors are also so excited and so forthcoming towards investing in these areas. So let's encourage them because this is what we need right now and this is what is promoting more and more tourism in Pakistan. Do you exactly know how much tourism has increased in Pakistan? Just not from international uh, tourists, in fact from local tourists that you do not get booking at a hotel in these uh, very exciting uh, places up north till like up to six months. You have to book, book six months in advance. So yes, we need more facilities, but do keep in mind the architecture and the environment and the surroundings and make sure safety precautions are taken. This is, this is uh, highly important. 
I'm going to take a short break and when we return, we're going to look at some images of Turkey and Pakistan. And as the tradition goes uh, with this show, welcome to Pakistan. We're going to compare the two images and see how similar some of these, um, some of the spots in Turkey and Pakistan are. But right after this short break. Welcome back. Welcome to Pakistan is the show and as you know, I always invite a foreigner and a Pakistani in the show. Now, right now, uh, before the break, we were talking to Usman Ghani, founder for Positive Pakistan, the forum. What exactly the forum does is encourages foreigners to come to Pakistan and see the positive side of Pakistan. Pakistan definitely has a positive side and uh, which many international travelers are realizing now as of today. And uh, like I said before the break, in some of the hotels, you may need a booking six months in advance. The demand is high and uh, the supply, yes, the country is working on that. The government of Pakistan has taken great initiatives and now private investors are pouring in in an influx. So that's all good news. You, yeah, are you telling course. your um, foreign friends, the network of foreign friends that you have on social media about all these uh, yeah, developments? Exactly. And also I'd like to add like, uh, you know, when I started traveling and the time I'm mentioning like 2011-12, from that time to this time, like a decade apart, now the image of Pakistan is really getting better. Uh, thanks to a lot of bloggers, bloggers and also the government is taking a lot of initiatives on this side. Otherwise, unfortunately, Pakistan is such a beautiful country. But before this government, I'm not taking sides or well, you against the any government, government, but still, the existing government tourism this. was unfortunately never on the agenda. Tourism was unfortunately never on the agenda of our governments before. Absolutely. So this is a good thing that uh, private investors as well as government, they are taking keen interest now, like the visas are uh, very easy now to get for a lot of uh, citizens of different countries as compared to like three, four years back. Pakistani visa was a headache for most That's nationals. That's right. Yeah. So That's I right. think now this is a step so in the right direction. many foreigners in Pakistan, especially if you go up north, there's so many foreign travelers that you'd come across. That's right. And so many people are interested in hiking. So. That's great news, I believe, for us. So, I'm going to show you some images now, as I promised right before the break. Some images um, where you will see a similarity between Pakistan and Turkey. So, Noor Banu is on a comment on the Turkish side and uh, Usman Ghani on the Pakistani side. Let's take a look at it. Now, see, we see all this. Can you comment, please? I think, yeah, this is from East Turkey. Yeah, it's similar. Where is this place? I think it's close to Concordia somewhere. This is Shangri-La. Ah, the Shangri famous Shangri-La. Shangri I've been there. You <laughs> have? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you have a Shangri-La too, I see. <laughs> yes. Very similar. Very, very, very similar. Let's take a look, look at the next one. Yes. Uh, this is... Um, that is so beautiful. I think this is from North I think Asia. it's Saiful Muluk. It is Saiful Muluk. It is Saiful right, Muluk. Right. Yes. This oh is, my God! This is Gavadar. This is yeah. This is Jeevni or something close to Gavadar. This is so beautiful. And this is Fetia, I guess. Yeah. Well, I I must say I'm quite impressed with the effort put in by my team to pick up <laughs> such images yeah, where you couldn't tell which one's Turkey and which one's Pakistan. Isn't that right? That's right. Well, Usman, Usman, up. Uh, would you like to uh, recommend? a few places to Noor Banu. She's been to Hunza, she's been to Karachi, Islamabad, Lahore, obviously she lives in. Which other places would you recommend to Noor Banu to visit in Pakistan? Right. Uh, I think uh, if she hasn't been to like the south of Punjab uh, or where Punjab meets Sindh, like uh, the places like Multan, Bahawalpur, Uj Sharif, then we go to Larkana, Sakhar. This belt is very beautiful and it is full of historical places. So, so much I think culture. She, yeah. So much culture there. Rich in culture and very diverse cultures as you move downwards from Punjab and enter Sindh. I think this is the belt she should really look forward to. I think that would excite you. 
I am excited. Like, I'll be here longer, you know, as you know. Like, my contract hasn't finished yet, so I have plenty of time you do, you to do travel. <laughs> you should really plan this side as well. Inshallah, because I will. Because most people, they start from Karachi, then they come to Lahore, then they go up north. What about Khyber Pakhtunkhwa? Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is beautiful, but there, we but already know, like, uh, Peshawar is a very historical city. Then we have Kagan Valley and Aptabad, these places are already very famous for their mountains. Uh, but I think this South Punjab and Sindh regions, they are sort of ignored places by even the local tourists. Like when you go there, they are Such beautiful palaces on the way. Yeah. Such beautiful history that you'd encounter. I have heard this place, Mohenjo Daro. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I really would like the to lost visit city. there. I really would like well, to Well, you could also there. try Harappa right here. Yeah, yeah Harappa, Harappa is just is like two hours by. drive from here. It's also from the Indus civilization, same as the Mohenjo Daro. Right, so Usman, um, amongst all nationalities that you interact with, that you have formed a network of friends with internationally, which nationality most, according to you, according to your personal data, visits Pakistan as tourists? I think. Uh, Talking about the north of Pakistan, Germans are on top because Germans have a like big connection with the north of Pakistan. Uh, if you might know that places like Fairy Meadows and some other places, they are discovered by German people. Really? So they, they were in Pakistan, but Germans came here and told us that, look, this is the place here. <laughs> so they always have this very strong connection with the northern side of Pakistan. And from the other side, I think Australians are also Australians like, are very interested interested in coming to Pakistan. And very keen. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I've seen a lot of Americans visiting yeah, yeah, Pakistan Americans recently. Also, of course. But because, on uh, my database list, I think Germans, Australians... Uh, they're the then, more adventurous sorts. Yeah, exactly. And also other countries from the central Have Europe. you been to Gawadar? No, I haven't been. Well, I, I haven't been to Gawadar as well since, you see, I haven't lived in Karachi for a long time, but... Now the development that's taking place, it's breathtaking. Uh, they are um, making it so user-friendly. The retreats there now, the sea there, the sea is blue. It's gorgeous. I mean, you can even go for a swim in there and it's beautiful. It's a great experience. I would also recommend that, you know, if you ever get a chance to visit Karachi, do plan a trip to Gawadar as well. Okay. Yeah, this whole coastal line is very beautiful. Absolutely. From Karachi to Gwadar. Hmm. They have Pasni Beach, Ormara Beach, then this Princes of Hope, the mud volcanoes there. They are all very beautiful places. Absolutely. Places. And in Lahore, do you think she's missing out on any tourist spot? She's been to Old City, she's seen the fort, she's seen the mosque. Is there any other place that she should discover or maybe around Lahore? Um, I think there is. there are a lot of forms of the uh, Mughal emperors, she might not have seen them yet. Uh, then if we move towards Islamabad, we have like Hiran Minar, then Khyoda Salt. Ha mine. Have you been to Hiran Minar? Of course, last year I was there. I I've been to so many places in Lahore actually. You have? Yeah, I have. I've been to Hiran then Minar. As been well. it was Khyoda so Salt good. Mines also? Katas uh, no, Raj Temples? Salt mine. No, I That's been also there. Mm -hmm. I think I the second biggest salt mines in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think of the infrastructure given our motorway and uh, the way it's organized? What it was good actually, it? it was really good. I didn't have any problem at all actually. And in Lahore, I have tried the Speedo Orange Line, you know, like the, I think it's very good. It goes everywhere, you know, so yeah. What's the best thing about Pakistanis that you like? Everything about Pakistan, I cannot choose. No, Pakistani people. Pakistan, as I told you before, they are welcoming. I, I really like this. Whenever they have something, they want to share. Whenever we go to a restaurant, they want to pay. You know, they are just so accepting. They they do their best for like for the foreigners, for the tourists here, which is very good. And whenever I say that I am from Turkey, they they I just can see the smile on their faces. You know, it's something beautiful actually. So I'm happy to be here. Right, so you do uh, wish to stay here for longer yeah, if given yeah, a chance? Yeah, I'm planning. Hopefully, inshallah, we'll see. <laughs> You'd like to do that? I would like to do that. So you're yeah. teaching Turkish, uh, the language Turkish? That's 
That's right. Yes, I university. teach my own language actually. So we have exchange groups who are planning to go to Turkey. So I teach them basic Turkish to so so that they can survive in Turkey. And I have other groups as well. And I have Arab students here in Lahore. I teach them English at the same university. So yeah, that's what I've been doing for six months, and it's enjoyable. Excellent, excellent. So you have family back home now? Yes, yes, that's right. And are they planning to visit Pakistan? They would love to because of the coronavirus. Everything has stopped as you know, otherwise they would have. Right, yeah. so they do plan to. They, they, they really want to actually. Uh, they really want to visit the northern sides, you know, Hunzai. Because I sent them the pictures and they were amazed, you know. <laughs> so they right. are planning so to. So have you bought any artifacts or... Uh, any uh, traditional items in Pakistan? So wherever I go... Apart from the shalwar kameez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> wherever I go, I buy hats. Topi. So like Before Sindhi hats. topi, like Hunza, or like... You have in all Lahore. of them. I have, yes. I, I just, I have a collection of having topis, you know, at, in Turkey as well. Also in my house in Lahore. I have so many topis. <laughs> right, right. So I have one more question. Did you, when you were living in Turkey, did you ever interact with Pakistani tourists there? Uh, I have had I had so many Pakistani friends back at my university, so they were you there. Did. Yes, they were there to study, and still I, you know, I have a connection. I also met some of them in Karachi as well, so it's good. Yeah, Lovely. there are so many Pakistanis in Turkey. Well, Noor Banu, I'm going to wish you all the best, and we hope that you stay longer in Pakistan and uh, you get to explore more of Pakistan. Thank you you so must much. discover Pakistan, it's worth it. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Usman Ghani Saab, thank you so much for giving us your precious time today. Thank you so And much. wish you all the best with this venture of yours called pa Positive Pakistan. And we hope that you s succeed furthermore in inviting more foreigners to come, to come to Pakistan and see the beauty of Pakistan. Thank you so much, Noor and Usman. I shall end the show here. There's so much to talk about Pakistan, so much to say about Pakistan, but we shall do so next week, same time, same show. Aap dekhte rahiye discover Pakistan.